Hey, hey, it's Rich with Red Phone Video. I wanted to talk to you guys today about a movie I just watched. Uh, I picked it up from Grindhouse Releasing. Um, it's a movie called Impulse. And it stars the Shat. The Bill Shat. Or William Shatner for the layman. Anyway, this movie, uh, it was crazy, man. I'd never seen it before. Uh, it was kind of an obscurity. But it's a movie directed by William Griffay. And for those who don't know who William Griffay is, he was like a regional filmmaker. He was uh, he was based out of Miami, Florida, I believe. And he used to make a bunch of uh, low-budget, B, schlocky, cheesy films. You know, he did uh, movies like uh, The Jaws of Death, uh, Whiskey Mountain, and uh, he did a movie called Stanley. It's about snakes. Anyway, I got this box set uh, by William Griffay, this arrow box set. He came from the swamp. Look at that. But we're not we're not going to talk about this. We're going to talk about Impulse. And uh, this movie was just loony as hell. It was uh, it was crazy and it was funny. I was laughing my ass off the whole time. Like uh, I I got on the bike to work out and I just wanted to throw a movie on while I was exercising and. Uh, this was this was perfect. I mean, it got my blood pumping. It had me laughing. Your buzzer's ringing. William Shatner, he he always goes over the top, and I'm so glad that in this movie he went gloriously over the top because every scene was like, it was just it was delicious. I just I wanted more, um, and you know. It's not like, it's not a great film. It wasn't meant to be. It's just entertaining as hell. And, you know, there's there's bad movies out there that try so hard to be good. Like, recently I just watched this, this movie called uh, Fear No Evil from 1981. And it tries so hard to be serious. And, you know, it, it, this movie, at least it knows what it is. Because it was able to fully lean into this, uh, this batshit territory. You know, but uh, just to give you guys an idea of what the movie's about. William Shatner, he basically plays this uh, this gigolo hustler guy, and he he suffers from childhood trauma, and it was it was brought on by a situation where he was he was forced to kill like his his mom's drunken abusive lover who who even abuses him, and um, it kind of reminded me a lot of the opening to the movie Pieces, like if you guys remember the movie Pieces from 1982. Uh, of course, pieces came after impulse, so they might have they might have stolen uh, the opening from that. But anyway, it starts out a lot like that, and so you know, obviously, William Shatner's got this um, troubled past, you know, this checkered past. So years later, he's scarred by this trauma, and he's and he's plagued by these psychosexual urges that he constantly has. He can't control them, you know. That's why it's called impulse. But uh, these urges that he has, they they drive him to to prey on these uh, these rich women, like these sugar mamas. And he gets them involved with uh, these investment scams. He tries to take their money and shit, and then ultimately he kills them, or he tries to kill them. Allow me. Oh, hello. We meet again, Mrs. Marston. I'd like to introduce myself. Yeah, I know who you are, Bad Stoke. I was giving some thought to the idea of investing. Come by for dinner tonight. So that's the basic premise, and. Um, yeah, this movie's hard to describe. It's 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 not like it really has like an intricate plot or anything, but it's just hard to describe because it has to be seen to be believed. For instance, there's this one moment in the film where the main girl, Tina, just jumps in the car with William Shatner when she ditches school, not even knowing who the hell he is. She just gets in the car. I'm guessing that was common in the 70s. I don't know. Why aren't you in school? Okay. There's just so many scenes in this movie that had me howling with laughter. It was... And like I said, it wasn't, it's not meant to be funny or or maybe it is. I don't know. But, uh, William Shatner's hammy performance just adds to the whole thing. And like, he's, he dresses like a pimp in, in moments and it just, it had me rolling. Yeah. I couldn't help it. And, um, I had, I had a blast with this fucking movie. There's like this fart scene in the movie and it's not deliberate, obviously, but they kept the take. They used the take and it's William Shatner farting. And, uh, you can hear it. If you really listen for it, you can hear it. And then he tries to cover it up with his over-the-top style of acting. And it's just, I mean, it had me cracking up. Because I had read this story. And I wanted to know if it was true or not. But it's after he kills some woman. And, uh, he starts, like, throwing up and retching, you know. and, and uh, Or he's about to. He's, like, gagging. 
And I think he did that on purpose to cover up the fart. I don't know, but it was it was hilarious. Like I was dying. <laughs> <laughs> And then there's this scene that, like I said, you you have to see it to believe it. There's a scene at a car wash with uh, Harold Sakata, who played Odd Job in the James Bond movies, and he's like William Shatner's pimp or something. I have no. He's like an ex partner of his, and uh, Harold Sakata's name in the movie is Karate Pete for some reason. He's got it like on the side of his RV. I just thought that was hilarious. So William Shatner like plots to kill him at this car wash, and he's got this this noose, you know, and he rigs up this this elaborate like pulley system. And uh, and he lowers the rope, and the noose like somehow fits perfectly over Odd Job's neck, and that almost killed Harold Sakata in real life. Like if you if you watch the special features on this, uh, William Griffey actually talks about it, and William Shatner provides a commentary on it. And it was interesting because uh, William Shatner really broke his finger in that scene and kept going, but um, not only did they have some behind the scenes mistakes going on there obviously Harold Zakata was almost strangled um but just the scene itself in the movie is just so chaotic and unhinged I mean I just I couldn't help but laugh the whole time I'd never seen a death sequence like this but uh he tries William Shatner tries to run him over with his car in a car wash you know and not only does he try to hang him he uses him as a punching bag and it's just the, the I think William Shatner Im improvised that whole fucking thing and it's just brilliant. This is brilliant. I'd never seen anything like it. It was so drawn out and uh I just I love it. Get up, get out, come back here. If you kill anyone, I'll kill you. So to sort of delve more into the plot here, uh you got William Shatner who finally meets this this woman. She's a she's a widow. And she's got this teen daughter who who doesn't trust him because William Shatner starts dating the woman and, uh, you know, and the daughter doesn't, she just doesn't, it reminded me a lot of the stepfather and uh, Michael Winner's masterpiece, Scream for Help. If you guys haven't seen Scream for Help, you should really check that one out. It's a lot like the stepfather. And uh, so there was a lot of similarities, you know, with those films, uh, just about the the young daughter who doesn't trust this new guy coming into her mom's life and she's still grieving her, her dead father. So th there's this sort of battle going on between Shatner and the, and the daughter. And, uh, it's pretty interesting and it gets really, really climactic, especially towards the end, you know, and she witnesses him like commit a murder and she's trying to tell everybody and everybody just thinks the girl's paranoid and that she makes up stories. Stop this insane lying. You're a mean, jealous, vicious little girl and you've got to stop it. The daughter, Tina, kind of reminded me of Heather O'Rourke at times. I don't know. I think it was the hair. I thought the cast was pretty good in this movie. Like, the, the woman who plays the mom, Anne, uh, Jennifer Bishop. I'd never seen her in anything else, really. But I thought she did a pretty serviceable job. And the little girl who plays the daughter, Tina, I thought she did a good job, too. Kim Nicholas. I'd only seen her in one other film. and I, She had played some hostage in the movie Black Sunday. But uh, she was actually pretty good in this. I mean, she she carried it as well as she could. Somebody's gotta believe me. Somebody's gotta believe me. I thought Ruth Roman from Strangers on a Train was good in it too. And uh, she plays like the friend of the mom. And she's a widow too. So William Shatner's trying to take advantage of her. And there's this scene with Ruth Roman and William Shatner that's kind of crazy. They they both duke it out. And it's just kind of a laughable fight scene. But uh, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> What's interesting though is that like William Shatner apparently feels remorse for what he's doing because at times it seems like he's he's sickened by his behavior. Regardless though, he still has no control over his violent impulses. You know, he he gets triggered all the time. He gets he gets triggered by the word tramp. He gets he gets triggered by women in general, but he gets triggered by balloons apparently because they're like there's this funny ass scene where he's he's walking with the the mom, the widow. And he runs into this lady and she's got these balloons and they just hit him in the face. And he just, you know, William Shatner just gets so triggered in that moment. And he just says, you fat. fat. People like you ought to be ground up and made of a dog food. It just made me laugh. I had to rewind the scene like three or four times because it was hilarious. I mean, it reminded me of Joe Biden and that voter in Iowa. Uh, look, Pat, look, here's the deal. Here's the deal. For a lot of you Star Trek fans out there, you probably know William Shatner for playing heroic types, but 
He could also play really scuzzy piece of shit guys like Matt Stone in Impulse. So, for all you Bill Shatner fans out there who want to see him just cutting loose, kind of like he did in that movie The Intruder, you know? And I'm willing to give my life, if that be necessary, to see that my country stays free, white, and American! You're definitely going to want to check out Impulse because it's Bill Shatner just going haywire. Why'd you say that? <laughs> My final thoughts on this film, like, I think this movie's cheesy as hell, but I think that's what makes it so enjoyable. Like I said, there's movies that try way too hard to be good, and they just end up being bad. And then there's films that they know exactly what they are, so they lean into all the hokiness, and they end up being great. Like this. Like this. Impulse is just, it's a, it's a great movie. I would probably have to give it a three, three and a half out of five, just for the entertainment factor. Just the fact that it kept me riveted the whole time i mean the performances are kind of bad there i mean you know i mean what do you expect but that's what makes it so great it's it's i hate using that phrase so bad it's good but that is definitely what this movie is it's so bad that it's good so i highly recommend it in terms of the transfer the film's a little murky at times like it's not the greatest transfer, and the, and the thing is, the original negative was destroyed, so they, they had to use an archival print that, uh, they, that they found. It was probably some inner positive, some dupe, you know? But considering the elements that they pulled from, this movie looks great. I mean, it really does. Just to let you guys know the special features on this disc, so you have in-depth interviews with director William Griffey. You have uh, William Shatner live in Santa Monica from 2022. You have additional interviews with producer and makeup artist Doug Hobart and art director Roger Carlton Sherman. You have an audio commentary by William Griffey, a uh, haunting alternate French soundtrack, which is interesting. I haven't delved into that yet. Uh, liner notes by acclaimed underground filmmakers Jacques Boyreau, hours of rare cinematic treasures from the vaults of William Griffey, still galleries, trailers, and other surprises. So yeah, Grindhouse releasing never disappoints me in terms of their transfers and bonus features. So yeah, like I said, if you like schlock, if you like low-budget, B-trash cinema, be sure to check out Impulse with Bill Shatner, because it won't disappoint you, trust me. It will not. So that's it, guys. You've been listening to Rich with Red Phone Video. Be sure to stab the like button. We talk about movies and physical media and all kinds of weird shit over here. So yeah, tune in and get your hands on Impulse. Oh shit. Catch you later.